questions, uh, share ideas, comments, um, and also give more information about AFRIMAP um, and the resources that we've created. And during the course of this presentation, we are going to be running some polls. Um, and I just want to show you how to get to the poll. Sometimes it pops up on the screen and disappears again. So at the top of your screen, you should be able to see um, a, a little menu with participants and your chat box, and also a little menu item with a triangle, a square, and a circle, which is activities. If you click on activities, I'm going to activate our first, launch our first poll now. And you should be able to see the poll. And if you can just tell me if you can see the poll there. So we're asking which of Afri, Afri Mapbar's resources are most are you most is interested in? And you can select the one that you think um, th that kind of brought you here today. You might be interested in all of them, but just for fun, just select any one that you're interested in. And then you should be able to see the results um, from the polls as people are entering their votes. So thank you very much for, for doing that. If you're struggling to, to, there we go, thank you. If you're not sure what to do, um, please raise your hand. I saw someone had a raised hand. Um, you're welcome to ask questions. All right, right, thank you very much. Kind of showing how we can see the polls if you're so this is the Thank you. Uh, symbols on the right. You should be able to click on there and then go to polls. And then you can do something like this. Uh, which bit am I most interested in? So I'm most interested in the community bit. I'm going to vote. And uh, yeah, so we'll run a couple more of those polls later on. Thanks, thanks, Andy. That was great. Um, so now I just have to look back at the... Okay, and then if you want to introduce yourself, you're more than welcome to do that in the Google Doc or in the chat. Um, if, you, if you are going to introduce you in, in the chat, it might disappear and people might not know who you are, and then you can just also introduce yourself in the doc, which is a little, little bit longer lasting. So with that, Andy, I hand over to you. Thanks very much, Nelda. Uh, very nicely done. Um, so yeah, this is the first time that we've done this. So bear with us if um, if we get a little bit confused <laughs> at any point. Uh, but yeah, we're really excited to be here and to uh, show you all a bit about what we've been doing. And then um, we're kind of we're seeking some input, really. So um, yeah, we're gonna. The idea is that. Uh, 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 um, that we're going to talk, so I'll talk for about 10 minutes, um, then Laurie will talk for about five minutes, then an elder will talk for about five minutes. We'll do um, we'll do a couple of polls, really, just to sort of get you thinking a little bit, um, and then we'll open it up for um, some discussion. And so the meeting is due to run for 45 minutes, but if, if you want to stick around um, for, you know, for 15 minutes afterwards, then we'll still be here. So you're welcome to join us. We've done the housekeeping. Um, yeah, so there's going to be the three of us, uh, myself, Anelda, and Laurie, uh, will be talking. Uh, I'm going to carry on because I'm aware that we're behind already, uh, which <laughs> but that's OK. Um, so the, the AFRIMAP R project, uh, is something that started uh, a bit more than a year ago now. And it's funded, or it was initially funded, by the uh, Wellcome, the Wellcome Trust uh, Open Research Fund. And uh, I'm based at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, so it's I'm uh, running it from there. And uh, yeah, this little Lego symbol is to uh, remind me about the, the kind of main idea is about the creation of building blocks or R components that uh, people can put together to to make their own make their own things, make maps or other things. And so we have these three sort of three strands to the uh, the strategy. This uh, building blocks that I talked about, 
um, some training, uh, developing training resources into using those building blocks and combine, combining them with other things, and then um, initiating a, or trying to, making steps to initiate a community around these things, which is kind of part of what we're, we're, uh, we're doing now. So broadly, I'm going to talk a bit about the, the building blocks. Uh, Laurie's going to talk a bit about the training, and then another will talk a bit about the community. And the thing that we really see, the thing that we're really targeting, and where we sort of really see the potential for greatest benefit in the short term is about routine data manipulation and visualization, about sort of routine workflows that people need to use in the, in their daily jobs. And this might be you know, making a monthly report on the uh, number of malaria cases in a district or a monthly report on uh, the uh, number of people that have attended a clinic or something like that. Or it could be just sort of one-off plots where your boss has asked you to make a visualization of something or uh, or an idea that you have and you want to be able to show that or it could be uh, web applications um, to share these kind of visualizations with a wider audience so we are less interested in kind of the advanced cutting level research partly because other people are better at, at that than us but or partly because this is where we want to target our efforts in the kind of routine uh, routine data uh, workflows and we see a sort of a real potential to provide things for um, growing African data science communities so we see or you know I've seen a lot of other sort of programs or you know attempts to improve uh, data uh, sort of data skills and sometimes they can come in from the top sort of like from at an organizational level uh, getting an organization to agree to a particular policy or uh, developing a particular set of resources but what we're trying to do is come in at an individual level saying if we can make things that are useful for individuals in their in their daily work then we don't have to interact with the organization we can provide things that are useful to individuals and that's sort of a kind of a bottom-up way of um, getting things getting useful things to be adopted within organizations without actually having to to engage necessarily with the organization and that's one of the you know the beauties of the open source approach and of R particularly as well and some of the ideas for this project came initially from uh, something I did uh, with some collaborators in Liverpool a couple of years ago, uh, where do we developed this application, this um, malaria data by district viewer, as a part of a Wellcome Trust competition for reusing data. And what the application does is, is not very complicated necessarily. It sort of takes a gridded data set and combines it with some administrative polygons and then uses that to you know generate tables that can be sorted of the numbers of malaria cases and one of the things that i thought of when i was doing this is that you know it's relatively straightforward to put together something like this but there are always little kind of tricks and hurdles and things that can kind of trip you up uh, sometimes with very sort of standard things like you know the naming of um, administrative areas and so if we could make these sort of components or building blocks to try and uh, iron out some of those difficulties then that would make it easier for these applications to be developed uh, you know, actually locally where where knowledge of the um, sort of issues and problems is greater so that, you know that's a, quite a, a well-known thing in in software development that if you're trying to develop a tool it's very important to 
to be developing it close to the potential users of that tool. So it makes more sense, it makes less sense for me to be developing these kind of applications in the UK. And it would make much more sense uh, for them to be being developed close to the issues that they want to address. And so that's where this sort of um, the building block kind of analogy comes in. The If we can make uh, these components that might take public data and administrative boundaries and have some sort of data manipulation components and maybe a web interface or other visualization and make it easier for those to be put together, then we think that's a, a useful thing to be doing. So um, here you see some different sources of open data and, and boundaries and the sorts of manipulations and the sorts of visualizations that uh, might want to be done. And so within, you know, this is kind of, this is sort of the analogy and in, in our terms, these building blocks might be our packages or they might be particular scripts or, or they might just be small sort of chunks of code that could be, um, that could be combined. And it might also be sort of training material. So we can think about how the analogy and how the actual reality kind of uh, come together. And with the with the the sort of COVID epidemic that happened, you know, very early in the AFIMAP R project, uh, we moved some of the things that we were doing. We got very interested in, in the location of health facilities because that because there were open data sets around the location of health facilities. If you look at the picture at the bottom left, we sort of came to understand that the situation was not straightforward you know there's multiple sources of open data and it wasn't obvious which were necessarily the best and how they related to each other so we initially developed an r package that made it easier to access the data and made it easier to compare the different data sources and we developed an application from that and then we actually wrote a paper that kind of describes this process of um of, of all of that and yeah so key to what we're doing is that everything is open it's all open source uh, and is out there we're we're sort of at the stage where we've developed uh, some of these um, components and and really then we've been developing prototypes to to show what that we can do because as I said you know, my main or the main purpose of the project is not necessarily or is not to develop applications to just solve particular issues but by developing the applications that allows us to demonstrate what the that what the components can do because also we're a we're a relatively small project you know initially we just had funding for a year and so what the approach was was to to generate some things that show what we that that indicate what we're doing and what we want to do, um, and then use that to attract more interest and find out what the needs are in a kind of an iterative uh, process. So, but if you were to go to the um, the GitHub page, there we can see we've got a number of uh, different repositories. Uh, so this is the one about the health. Uh, the health sites data from there. Uh, there's a link to the web interface, uh, which should start up a little shiny app. Um, which if it just waits a while, uh, which allows you to select uh, particular countries and uh, select particular data sources and kind of zoom in and zoom out and uh, look at a a plot of the different facility types as well. So that's the health sites thing. I'm quite conscious of time uh, as well. We also got one on administrative boundaries. Um, so again, we wrote a package that made it slightly easier to access administrative boundaries from um, different sources. There's also a online uh, prototype there which 
It'll take a little while. I also have to thank our studio for providing us with a sort of a uh, a good deal or a sort of like a free upgrade to our shiny amps account to deal with um, COVID related issues. So again, this allows you to select particular countries and shows boundaries from two different sources, either geo boundaries, which is a newer, possibly better one, and from Gadam, which is an older one, and you can uh, see where any differences between them occur. Uh, and there are there's some other things in there. So um, I'm conscious. Yeah, I'm conscious that uh, uh, my time is nearly up, and so I was going to uh, hand over to Laurie in a minute to uh, talk about the training resources. But just sort of one thing, to say that you know this. What we're trying to do next is to find a bit more about you know whether the things that we've developed are useful and what other things would be useful and that can allow us to apply for further funding to kind of address these needs because you know longer term we don't want this to be just a, a short-term project and for the kind of things to to be left unattended we're keen to make this something that uh, is uh, more sustainable in the longer term so thanks very much. So Laurie, are you ready to move on to talk a bit about the training things? Yeah, thanks Sandy. I'll, I'll switch over to, to presenting just a sec. Excellent. So hopefully you guys are all seeing, um, seeing my window. And can you see the slides now? Uh, yeah, they've come up now. Thanks. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so I just introduced myself. My name is Laurie Baker. I'm a data science lecturer at the Office for National Statistics. Um, and I'm based actually in, in Glasgow. Um, so it's been very nice to see some familiar faces joining, joining today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing developing training materials. Um, so we've been creating a range of interactive tutorials using the LearnR package. Um, and so I'd like to introduce you to a couple of them today. Um, so this one is on an introduction to, to spatial data, um, which we have here on the uh, shinyapps.io. And the nice thing about the LearnR tutorials is that it's essentially a way to interact with R through your browser. So for instance, here we've got sort of it's in kind of different, um, there, there's different sort of uh, areas that, that are covered in the course. You can go in and you can go to the next um, topic. It sort of introduces you to the, the data sets that we'll be playing with. Um, and then the cool thing I think is that you have our code here so that you can go ahead and sort of run run the code yourselves. Um, you could also sort of edit it, um, putting, putting some of your, own notes um, within it. And the idea here is that we really want to make um, these tutorials as interactive as possible um, and something that you can you can build on and also play play around with and that we'll use for our, our teaching as well. Um, so just to sort of show you a little bit about this one, it's going to introduce to different sort of spatial um, types. Um, we're looking at things like like points, um, which here represent the capital cities. Um, we also have like the highway network to introduce sort of lines. Um, and then we've got polygons to, to introduce the countries themselves. And this is all using the AFRI LearnR data. Um, and then the second um, tutorial that we've created is like a mapping crash course. So the idea with this is if you want to sort of see um, some of the different kind of maps that you can create, um, this is a great sort of place to, to come. So for instance, it introduces you to Tmap, which would allow you to make a map um, like this. And also, um, you know, within sort of ggplot, making plots like, like these, and then um, also map view. So different ways that you could sort of add um, different layers or decide to sort of show a layer or, or not. 
Um, so there's some really interesting applications, and this kind of crash course is sort of if you if you're kind of really keen to get to um, the the sort of endpoint and see what's what's possible, then this is a really great place to start. And then the third tutorial that we've developed um, is more about um, if you have sort of a data in a spreadsheet, how do you then join that to spatial data so that you could get um, those values that you have, for instance, on the population of a country, how can you get it sort of plotted plotted on a map? Um, and it also sort of shows like some of the other data sets that, that we have. Um, and then uh, I would really love feedback on, on this one in particular because um, I've taken this sort of risky um, example, let's see, the risky example of, um, Oh, hang on, I think it's just one more back. Um, I've taken a risky example of comparing national animals and football mascots as an example of sort of how you would join two data sets. So I would really love everyone to double check me because I know how important football is in in many countries. Um, so especially if I've gotten any of those wrong, please let me know. But the idea really with these tutorials is for you to have a bit of fun, um, for you to learn sort of things. We've got some interactive quizzes um, within here, but they're really sort of intended as an interactive way to play play along. Um, and we really love your feedback and, and look forward to hearing from you. Um, so I'm going to switch back to the slides now. Um, and the next thing I'd like to say is that in terms of what's next, we'd really love to hear from you and we'd love to have you involved as well in helping us create um, these tutorials more. Um, so we really look forward to you getting in touch and also hearing from you on what things are difficult in terms of um, when you're creating maps or when you're working with spatial data. Is it sort of finding good sources? Is it um, you know creating creating some of these things? One of the intentions for the training materials is really to try to make it easier to move past some of the pitfalls that, that kind of happen when you're working with spatial data. So we really look forward to, to hearing from you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to um, hand it back to Anelda. Um, Anelda, I'll, I'll sort of work through the slides. You just tell me when, when you'd like to move on. Excellent. Thank you. So just quick introduction. I'm Analda van Wald. I'm based in South Africa. Um, and uh, I ran a small consulting company that has been helping researchers to adopt technology in their work um, since 2014. I've worked um, in many countries in Africa, running workshops, um, teaching people to code, um, helping people with data and open science related um, training. So I'm really excited to have all of you um, in this in this conversation as well. Um, so I'm just quickly going to talk about our approach to grow our community. And if you can show me the next slide. Uh, we basically started with what we knew when we came into this project. Um, almost everybody on the, no, I think everybody on the project have worked with um, collaborators in Africa or in South America or um, in, in other um, more challenging environments. Um, and so we took what we've, what we've seen in our work, what was stumbling blocks, what have um, been challenging for people to do, and that's how this project started. Uh, we, from what we knew, so just admitting someone, from what we knew, we started, and Andy mostly started to develop some building, block, building blocks with other team members um, and at the same time, reaching out to the community to see what is going on, what do people want, uh, using this information to start developing the training materials and also a book that's coming, um, that will be coming out, an uh, open source book, free and online. Um, and now we're at the phase where we can finally start to host events and get people to use our training material and also to, get, uh, to build more personal relationships with um, members of the community and bring people on board to collaborate um, and share their skills as well. And then uh, constantly taking in new ideas from the community to help us decide where to go next and what to do. Can you uh, show me the next slide? 
Um, what we're doing going forward over the next few months, very exciting. We're starting a new monthly meetup um, every third Wednesday of the month at 12 p.m. UTC. We'll be meeting online, and this will not be a place where we'll be talking about AfriMap R, but this will be a place for the community to talk about their R and mapping experiences, challenges, resources, opportunities, um, and hopefully some small presentations by the community about the work that they're currently involved in, showing us some code, sharing the latest lesson that they've learned, or the, the stumbling block that, that they've overcome. Um, we also will be running a three-week tutorial series um, where we'll be taking people through the tutorials that Laurie has just shown. Um, and that will be an hour and a half session where people will also have an opportunity to go through the tutorial and then bring their own data and see how they can make use of their own data to do things that we've just shown in the tutorial. Uh, lastly, there's an open um, and online book that's coming out. There's more tutorials and more building blocks. And we will be working towards improving the documentation so that it's more um, user-friendly and accessible. I think the last slide is about what you can do next. So there's many, many ways in which you can get involved. And as Andy said, we're a small team, and we're still learning really about how to um, be accessible to the community and to bring people on board and really would like to hear from you. There's many ways that you can reach out to us. Um, and I've posted a link in the chat area and in the document, not, not yet in the document, I'll post it in the document just now. Um, on our website, there are all the avenues that you can get involved, um, create issues on GitHub. If that's what you want to do, you can email us, um, reach us on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. And I think that's my whole story. Is it? Yeah, that's me. All right. So we have more polls for you. Um, now that you know what we do, I have a quick poll about what level would you like our next tutorial to be targeted at? Would you like us to do a really beginner's tutorial for people new to mapping in R? Do you want a more intermediate, something very specific um, but that's, that assumes that you already have some knowledge of mapping in R? Or do you want advanced stuff? So thank you for people who are completing this poll. You're welcome to, to um, click on the little activities bar at the top of your screen, top right, and complete the poll. Thank you, Andy. Um, and you should also be able to see what people are saying. So really fascinating to see how it changes as people are completing the poll. If you are having trouble completing the poll, you're welcome to um, put up a hand. I'm going to move to the next poll now. Well, I'm going to, to end this one, not to worry. I think, I'm not sure if we can run multiple polls at once. Let's see. I'll leave that one open and I'll launch the next one. And this is about how would you like to get involved? Do you want to be a learner? Do you want to help us review our code or our tutorials? Do you want to teach our materials? Do you want to contribute to the code? You're not ready to be involved? Or can you think of other ways that you'd like to be involved? Um, Thank you very much for people who are completing that as well. Lovely. We've got some developers in the room. And, and just to say that, you know, this isn't a binding commitment. We're not going to record this data and uh, hold you to it, but we're just sort of looking to get some indication of what you might be interested in doing. So, um... Wonderful. Thank you. Um, second to last, Paul, and then we're going to open for questions, is would you like to join us for our um, online study sessions, the one that I've just spoken about, three one and a half hour sessions working through our tutorials? That looks very promising. Andy, we've got some candidates. We've got some takers. So we will be confirming dates of that soon. Um, I'm sure by, by early next week, we'll be able to confirm dates. And we will be notifying you. If you have ticked the box to say that you want to receive further information, we will be sending um, emails to you with, with information about when the meeting, uh, when the workshops will, will take place, and also about our monthly meetup. And the last poll 
is about, would you be interested to tell us more about your work triggering our monthly calls? And this will be a three minute to 10 minute presentation. You can just tell us, you can do a short slideshow, any demonstrate your code, um, bring a question about something that you're struggling with or anything, 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 just so that it's not always us speaking. Um, and really that the community gets to know each other. Excellent, that looks great. Thank you so much for everybody who participated in the polls. So Andy, I'm going to hand over to you now to, um, to manage the questions. If you do have a question or a comment um, and you're not able to ask it during the session, please feel free to add it to the document, which we've shared the link of. I'll make sure that the link is in the chat again. Um, if you do have a question now, you're welcome to raise your hand. There's a little button at the bottom of your screen, bottom right, that says raise hand. If you click on that, I'm going to try and, and manage the hand raising. So if you're interested uh, to ask a question now or make a comment, please click on the raise hand. So first of all, I'm going to respond to this. Um, yeah, someone's written a question in uh, in the document here, which is good. So uh, would there be scope in the project to make a repository of geospatial African data sets, uh, perhaps with some commentary on the pros, cons, needs, knows? Um, absolutely. Yes, it's a great idea. Uh, we should do it. Um, yeah, it'll be, and so it would be good to think about how, you know, kind of how best to do that, because Personally, sometimes I get a little bit, well, not annoyed, but frustrated by the the way that sort of data repositories kind of sell themselves as being, oh, this is sounding really negative. I'll, I'll stop sounding quite necessarily negative, but how uh, you can read something about a, a, a repository and it sounds like it's going to solve all your problems. And then you go to it and you find out that it's a long list of links of which sort of 50% of them don't actually work. Um, and, you know, some of the others take you to play. So it'll be really good to work out how to make it useful and live and um, and for it not to get too big uh, so that it sort of retains that usefulness. So yes, that would be a great thing to do. And yes, you know, talk to us about how you think that might be most useful. And um, so, do you want to say something about uh, Paula's work? I do. Yes. Can you find the link to it? So um, Paula, um, who sorry, and whose surname has just escaped me. Uh, uh, has, Moraga. <laughs> thank you. Paula Moraga, who's been involved in the project with us. Uh, what's it called? R Spatial Data. Not the .io, there it goes. Has been doing this great project that sort of generally, let me put it in the chat, I can find out how to get to the chat. But it's sort of kind of about spatial data in R generally, and we've got a link to it. And it's really, yeah, this is really great. This is not like the thing that I was talking about before. This is uh, really useful because you can go on that and it will take you to code and it has examples that works through the code so you know that it's working um and we have we're working with paula uh and she's had a couple of great interns that have been working with her on making this and one of our next plans is to take some of these um static pages and develop them into sort of an interact into interactive learn our tutorials um that can be useful as well but I still think there's the potential for, you know, more of a, a repository of data sets, sort of specifically for Africa. Uh, there's another question, which is, uh, is it possible to get help when mapping my own data? And again, uh, yes, it is. Send, you know, where you can either, either go through the getting involved uh, page on the website, or just send us an email and we'll um, we'll see what we can do. We <laughs> can't guarantee that we'll be able to solve your issues, but uh, we'll do our best. 
But that's also why we want to start bringing the community together in our monthly meetings, because maybe we don't know, but maybe someone else in the community has an answer. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and because I think that's one of the, again, sort of like a real potential is that for a relatively narrow issue, so by narrowing in on making maps of African data with R, that's you know then going to be a relatively small community that we can kind of share approaches for, and we can benefit from uh, problems that people are, are having and and solutions that people have come up with already. Because I'm sure there are lots of solutions out there that are sitting hidden away on people's um, you know laptops and and C drives, and it would be great if we can kind of release some of those. And also partly that's something that we can offer you, you know, if you have a bit of code that does something kind of interesting or cool or useful, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you would like to get a bit more of an audience for that, then, you know, we'll work out a way that we can, uh, we can share it with, with the community and you can, you know, you can retain the authorship of that. We're not trying to, um, you know, take anything away. But if you want to use us as a way to sort of uh, publicize what you've been doing, then um, we'll work out a way to do that as well. So the next question, any plans for people who want to learn R like an intermediate course? Uh, do you have specific stuff in that? Okay. Um, I mean, again, you know, reach out to us with what your, what exactly what you want, you know, or what would be useful to you. Um, you know, partly we have like the focus on mapping in R because I think that's where there is a need and, you know, it helps us to retain a bit of a focus, but we can either, so we, we can either point you to existing sort of more general courses that we're aware of. I know Laurie, um, uh, has worked on a sort of various training things related to this so yeah again just you know reach out to us try and give us a bit more information about what it is you want or what what it is you think will be most useful for you and we'll um again we'll see what we can do and then there's another question is this project involved with surveillance of illnesses as well and doing this in r um so we're not directly involved with surveillance currently. Um, but again, you know what we, I suppose again, it's about, we think that some of these, um, some of these sort of components and uh, routines could be useful, you know, are the kind of things that are used in disease surveillance. Um, and so if you have, if you have a particular issue that you're interested in, then again, reach out to us and we'll see how what we offer could potentially fit in with that. Because mostly what I see us as, you know, I see the real potential is for us to kind of be the, the plumbing that fits together sort of existing data sets and tools and that. So, you know, if people are working with, data in DHIS2 or that's coming of, from some other system and they can get that data out. The kind of components we're talking about, the sorts of things that could allow you to manipulate, manipulate that data in a different way and um, getting it into some sort of different outputs. Um, now I'm aware that we've, so we've just come up to what we, we advertise this as being like a 45 minute meeting. Um, so we're still going to be here if you, uh, you know, if you need to leave for something else, um, that's absolutely fine. Um, so thank, so I'll just kind of say, I'll, you know, we'll keep going, but I'll just briefly say thank you uh, to everyone for kind of coming along and uh, thank you to the other presenters as well. Um, but we're still here and um, yeah, keep, keep asking the questions. Andy, there's a couple um, raised hands. There's one for X, XB. 
um, if they'd like to present their question. Hello, and also, is, um, um, to be honest. Hello, may I? Yes, I please go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Andy, for allowing me to join this this group. I am I am a former uh, member of the School of Tropical Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, and uh, it, it was really great to join and, and better understand this 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 initiative. I just wanted to mention an issue that you may want to consider, even if it is probably slightly out of your remit, which is to have in mind and maybe also when in, in operational terms, uh, the decision-making uh, environment that these data, these outputs are meant to inform. I think that that, that would be useful to maybe uh, better prioritize and better target uh, the type of data, the type of analysis, and particularly the type of outputs. Uh, this is something that on some of our other work we, we are dealing with. and. My perception is that really uh, we fail a lot when dealing with data and considering what is going to happen, this data, in which table will it land. It's just for you, for your consideration, and I would be more than pleased to. I, I couldn't react because I'm on Android, but I am very pleased if I could keep the, uh, a line uh, uh, with, with you on, on these issues. And, and, I, all, I, I'm, and, and I, I, I am also a, a great fan of R. Uh, self-learning. Thank you. Thanks, Xavier. Uh, yes, it's yeah, it's a really, really useful point, and the one that in discussions with some other people the other day um, came up with this with a similar point. You know, if if we want this to be maximally useful, then we, sh you know, it would be helpful for us to be. Um, considering the, the consumers and considering how sort of data are used currently to inform decisions and how we can help with that process. And um, I can completely agree. And it, yeah, be really very welcome to kind of keep that conversation open with you. And because, you know, partly at the moment, you know, in a, in a short project, I suppose we felt that we could have spent a long period of time trying to characterize the needs more clearly or instead we can start making some small sort of general components and in a way that helps helps establish what the needs are because then you know you can make something and then someone can say oh no actually that doesn't quite do what i want it to which is a good start to kind of knowing what to do next but um, yeah good point Sorry, Laurie, do you have track of any other hands? I sure, can't so, um, Tatiana Alonzo Amor also has a question. Hi, hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Um, so I have a couple of, of questions or, or thoughts that I would love to get your guys' uh, feedback on that. So one has to do, of course, with this that they were saying before about who is the target audience for all these products that you're doing. Is it someone that is a beginner in R? Is it someone that has a consolidated background in R? Is someone in the research front or is someone in the decision-making front? Because I think like then a lot of this stuff that you're doing and that have to do with, with visualization, then a lot comes along with that, right? And I think like visualizations become, are like very successful when the user gets some like data ownership of what is happening. So they're able to play around and they know where this data comes from and they know if they're seeing like summary statistics, they know where they, they where they come from. And this is like very explicitly. So I was I wanted to know maybe your thoughts on this line of of maybe who do you find the final user of these visualizations is or, or of these building blocks is. And then also the other question is I'm like already like a heavy user of R due to my work. And I had already fought like with having to plot a shape file and all the names are not correct and the CSV file is different and it's all the mess. 
And then the other day, I started using Tableau. And you put that there, and in one click, you have a map. And this for me was amazing. So maybe also like your thoughts on that in terms of um, why sticking only to R and I'm guessing this also relates to the first question of who is the target audience is then. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Tatiana. Lots of really good points in there. And um, so for me, I think our target audience is, you know, our data analysts in Africa making that you know, that need to represent data that then will be presented to, to decision makers. So I think our initial audience is probably or you know our initial focus is probably uh, people that have a bit of knowledge of R already um, that we can kind of improve this process for them. Because uh, yeah, you know, in your example about Tableau, it is very pertinent. You know, th there's there shouldn't be any reason why it's easier to do things in Tableau than it is in R, except for the fact that you know they've got a, a large software development team that have have ironed out some of these problems. But for me, the benefits of open source so that's if we can make something that in r that is as easy to use for um for this kind of mapping process as it is in tableau the huge benefit of r is that's something that can be shared with en with anyone the the code is completely open source it's reproducible it can be adapted to to make a monthly report as much as it can to be to make an interactive application and you know that the thing that stops it that that makes it a bit more difficult in R is the you know all this thing about matching names and those kind of things. But those those issues are solvable with current R components. They just need to be put together in a similar way that they've been put together um, in in Tableau. So. Yes, so uh, and then that's I mean, you know, in a way that's sort of something to aim for. That's something that's uh, um, so and I'm happy to um, kind of come back and respond to any of those things further. But I think that's um, yeah, that's sort of where we see that we are. But also, you know, we may have a, a, a kind of priority target audience, but that doesn't mean that these things can't be useful for others and also that other communities can't contribute to them because whereas maybe we see the greatest need in sort of operational uh, people that are using it for their work in ministries of health or something like that then it's still very possible for researchers that are in more of an academic environment to contribute to those tools and to use those tools themselves so it may be that academics could be early adopters of some of these things that can then make them better that then they can get to places where they can have a greater impact. So, and partly I'm, you know, I don't necessarily want to make exact judgments of where these things are going to be used. What we're trying to develop are things that are very general and we think they will be useful in, in different places. But, you know, if we can present what we've produced, then, then people can decide whether it's useful for them or or not. Okay, great, thanks. Laurie, can you see any more questions? There was a question in the document from Alice Kamal asking, um, saying, fantastic in initiative. Are there plans to build capacity in Africa? I think we should increasingly create our own solutions. Um, and I have been putting some things um, in the in the document, but Andy, I don't know if you want to respond to that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a, a really valid point, and um, I'm very careful not to say that the AfriMap R project, and you know, we're not trying to create the final solutions in a way. That's why I, I keep talking about these building blocks. Is we're trying to sort of support the process of with components to be able 
um, for for others in Africa to be able to make solutions. And so we're really keen to do what we can to um, kind of develop capacity and uh, yeah, and sort of collaborate with existing communities as well. Any other questions? I know where to look for the hands now. So if you want to raise your hand, I will see it. Thanks, Laurie. Right, well, I think we've only got sort of two minutes to go. Um, so if anyone just has, uh, you know, any brief points, suggestions, anything they would like to say, then uh, this is your last chance. Um, Thanks for your positive feedback in the chat as well, Mary. Sorry, Lori, over to you. No, 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 go for it. I was just going to say very briefly that um, something we didn't mention, but something that we're very passionate about too is um, putting the resources into different languages um, as well. So that's like another sort of piece that is, is very important for us and, and something we're thinking about developing. So um, we'd love to kind of get feedback and here for you and and especially with our Latin American um, uh, people who have joined today, it'd be great to you know create similar resources and and do more in Spanish as well or Portuguese. Right. Um. I don't think I don't think I have a concluding message uh, prepared. So I'll, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. An elder, do you want to say anything before to give me like uh, thirty seconds to think of what I might say after that? I'm just browsing through the polls, and it seems like we definitely have people that's interested in learning the uh, the using the learn, teaching resources that we've created, um, and that's exciting because that means we can go on a journey together where we can learn what it is that's stripping you up and see what we can create to make those things even easier. Um, so we'll definitely be in touch with um, people who have signed up for communication in the next week uh, to confirm dates and see who's available. Um, there's about 14 people who've indicated that they're interested. We are going to run a small group for this first online training because we um, are aware of technical challenges um, and don't know how it will be uh, to help people get through the tutorials. The nice thing is it can run um, on the browser or inside R. So we'll do our best to support you. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in those training um, events as well. Okay, so yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very much, everyone, for coming along. And uh, you know, continue to keep an eye on what we're doing. We'll we'll send you an update with what's happening. And you know, if if you want to get involved, get involved. And you've, there's sort of like the real opportunity to to sort of change the direction of what we're doing, or kind of get your stuff involved with what we're doing. And um, so do do reach out to us. And uh, yeah, thanks very much, and thanks for coming. Thanks to you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, Kennedy. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thank Mary. You Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, my Bombay. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Kennedy. Hello. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks to the Hero team for being here. Right. I don't know what you're supposed to do at the end of the meeting now. Do you just kind of, when you run these things, you just disappear? You, you, you run. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody in the room who still wants to chat or wants to talk to us about the work that they're doing? Okay. So, um, well done. Thank you. I'll stop the recording now.